Hi, my name's Gemma Hunt, and I'm speaking to you today from Fat Seven's TV studio in West London, run by their Iranian production team. Sat7 broadcasts in the Middle East and North Africa. It's a region marked by conflict, poverty and despair. But every day they bring life-changing moments of joy into millions of lives. They do this through powerful, faith-filled television and digital media programs. They do this because they know a moment of deep joy can be the start of a life transformed. Today's programme is called Free To Be Me and focuses on Fat Seven's work with children in Lebanon, especially in the aftermath of the COVID-19 lockdown and the massive explosion in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, that caused extensive damage to the heart of the city. The explosion threw Sat 7's Juliana Sphere, who manages Sat 7's educational programmes from their Be Beirut studio, out of her chair and onto the floor. In the aftermath, many residents hit rock bottom, feeling defeated and hopeless. And Juliana shared how she was one of them, until she witnessed the response of the youth of Beirut, whose resilience and unity filled her again with hope. Let's hear a short report now from Juliana. This place witnessed something we have never witnessed before in all of our years of the civil war. This tragedy today amounts to 135 dead, to 5,000 injured, a lot of people missing, 300,000 families homeless. The explosion also destroyed a lot of goods at the port. Uh, we hear of our wheat, for instance, uh, stacks of uh, medicine, and every day we hear of uh, new shortages. Behind me, is one of the initiatives of the youth of Lebanon, the youth of Beirut, cleaning, distributing water to those who, who are volunteering, distributing uh, sandwiches, bread to the old people, to all those who live alone. The Lebanese people today need hope. They have lost hope in their politicians. They have lost hope in the future. Please pray. Pray for protection from another civil war. Please pray for um, protection from immigration as well. A lot of our young people will want to leave now. Please pray for us here at Sat7 to be the church that heals, to be the church, the wounded church, that will be able to extend healing to the people on the air and on the ground. Thank you. You can hear more about how to support Sat7 later in the program. Now, in the midst of all this, it was a real privilege last week for me to make a new friend with Marianne Arawaji. Now, she is a presenter with Sat7 Kids, a dedicated children's Arabic channel, which broadcasts from Sat7's biggest studio in Beirut. Now, as many of you might know, I'm also a children's TV presenter and a mum, <laughs> and I believe passionately that children should be given opportunities to be themselves. I mean, isn't that what every parent wants for their child? To be able to say that they're free, free to live the lives that God intends for them. Well, I heard Marianne talk about how in the midst of it all, faith-filled television is bringing freedom and joy to children in the Middle East. And I'm sure that if I came to her studio, then I would see it with my own eyes. But sadly, I can't visit at the moment, but I am really pleased that we can go live to her and her team right now as they have just finished broadcasting their new live children's show called Hello Marianne. So let's join her now. Hi, 
Wow, Marianne, that was so great. It's great to see you. How are you all doing? Hi, Dama. It's great to be with you today. Thank you so much. You're doing great. Could you teach me how to say hello in Arabic? Definitely. Marhaba. 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 Okay, Marhaba. Good <laughs> now, I believe that you live in or just near Beirut in Lebanon, and we've just mm -hmm. been sharing with the viewers how things have been particularly difficult there since the explosion. Can you share with us how it affected you? Yeah, well, my husband, my four-year-old boy, Noah, uh, we were uh, dining together in an outside place and the explosion happened. Uh, we, we definitely got scared. We heard two explosions consecutively. Noah hung on to me and he told me, I was, I'm afraid, mommy, because a lot of people started shouting, crying. I'm sure we all remembered, you know, like scenes from the war we've lived in Lebanon before. Many people were having panic attacks. All I could do was hug him and start praying, saying, Jesus, Jesus. And, you know, I could not stop thinking of the people who would have gotten hurt at that moment and uh, that was so sad you were in a you know like um, we were shocked but at the same time I couldn't stop just praying and asking God for protection yeah and you wanted to continue the output of Sat7 as well so you and your husband started to broadcast live from the roof of the building mm. so that you could still put out the message of hope to people yeah. so what was that like well, it was such an emotional evening because seeing people of our country suffer, um, most of them lost their houses, some of them lost their loved ones. Um, it was so heartbreaking. So we wanted just to have an evening of worship and prayer. We prayed for the hurt tearfully uh, because it reminded us, you know, of the verse in the Bible that says that the Lord is close to all those who are brokenhearted and crushed by pain and He is always ready to restore them. <laughs> That is truly amazing and it looks so beautiful. What a blessing you and your husband and your team are to your community. So how do you feel now that the mood is in the city? Do you feel like that has really helped to lift people's spirits? Um, well, when the explosion happened, you know, many streets were wiped away, uh, many schools were even destroyed, uh, hospitals could not, you know, have enough place for everyone uh, there. But the beautiful thing that happened, you know, out of ashes comes beauty. If you go now to the streets in Beirut, you would find youth from different churches, from different religions as well, just, you know, uniting their efforts to reconstruct houses, to give food to people there, to take care of the emotional needs of people. Many psychologists as well are going there, talking to children, helping them out. And Sat7 has done beautiful initiatives as well, going out on the street, distributing refreshments and food, breakfast for the people. So, you know, this just makes me so happy to see people united again in Lebanon because, you know, uh, Lebanon has different, you know, like um, many things that pull people apart. So it's beautiful to see that out of something that is so hard, uh, something beautiful is coming out. It's truly inspirational. I am so in awe of all that you've been doing. And as I mentioned earlier, we are both children's TV presenters, uh, just in very different places. <laughs> so mm -hmm. how did you get into presenting for children and getting involved with Sat7? Um, well, I began presenting programs for kids on Sat7 when I was only 10. I was such an introvert and shy person. Um, and it was for me a mere job from, from which I took my pocket money. But then at the worship conference when I was 14, I truly experienced experience what the presence of God is and this changed my whole view of God. He, he seems to be the faraway God from whom I was scared uh, and I wanted to only please because I'm afraid of the punishment. He became a father and a really close friend to me uh, with whom I could share anything, you know, like uh, whenever I used to be so sad, so, you know, when, when you're a teenager, there's peer pressure around you at school. I used to go to him to cry out to him and make a song. I would write a song to express my love and my feelings feelings to him. And that's why now I really focus on worship and every show I do. I want to teach kids to 
connect to God through worship, to lift a song of praise, a song of, you know, like a, a sadness. I express my sadness to him, my gratitude to him. So worship for me is key to my relationship with God. It's amazing that you can make it so much a part of the job that you do. I think for me, I've worked in TV for a very long time and haven't always been able to openly share my faith. And yet, I kind of in a way knew that I didn't need to because I had this prophetic word that was spoken over me when I was about wow. 16, that I would be salt and light in the dark place of the media. And so I've wow. always had this comfort that even though I may not be able to actively talk about my faith on camera, I know that Jesus and his light is shining out of me in the places that I'm working in, which is pretty yeah. awesome. Definitely. I'm sure as you're an influencer and kids are following you, you know, instead of following some other, you know, bad images of idols, they can follow you and see the, the grace of Jesus through you. Yeah. Gemma, I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So. So we've all been through very hard moments as kids, you know, that made us suffer in a way, but uh, pushed us towards God. So when I was a kid, I was bullied because I was a very shy person. I studied hard and I was like the church girl. So kids used to stay away from me and make fun of me. And that really hurt. But it made me go to God with my sorrows, my worries. And, you know, he changed me and he was the source of comfort to me. May I know um, what... Uh, have you been through as a kid and that drew you closer to God? Well, my parents separated when I was three or four years old. And so I think my, my whole world just changed very quickly. Everything that I saw as normal then became very different. And that's something we can all relate to <laughs> in the current climate. Yeah. But at that young age, I just felt like, what is going on? And thankfully, my mom has always been a church goer and I continue to go to church with my mom. When I was visiting my dad, I didn't get to go. But weekends up with my mom, I actually got to go and go to church. And I think it was through the church community, knowing who Jesus was, that he loved me, even though my parents didn't love one another anymore. It wasn't because of me. And he made me feel valued and appreciated wow. in the church. And yet my home, home life was very different, but I had this assurance of who I was in mm. Christ. And that has definitely been the one thing that has been like my backbone throughout my whole walk, my whole journey through life, just knowing that Jesus is there. And it's like people say, oh, it's terrible to have a crutch. I'm like, Jesus is my crutch. I'm going to lean on him because he gets me through everything. How are you Thank coping you. without him? <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're definitely right. Thank you for sharing that. No, it's a pleasure. Now, just a few moments ago, you finished your wonderful show, Allo Marianne, where children in Lebanon can actually call in live and take part in the show. How have you been helping support children and their mental health in this time? So during the month of COVID-19, um, kids were all isolated at home and Set7 launched the show, Allo Marianne program. Uh, it's aimed to provide a safe space for children to express their emotions. But we had no idea how necessary this show would become. You know, after the explosion, um, we started encouraging viewers even in Lebanon to, to call, to express their feelings. Um, it was okay to feel sad or afraid, but they need to take it out you know to put it in the right place so we launched um, you know like a campaign where we would encourage kids to send us videos of them uh, maybe singing acting drawing to just put everything out and this is I think a very good uh, kind of therapy to uh, to let them know that they're not alone we're here to support them to listen to them and we want them to express what's inside the lines were flooded with callers uh, throughout the Arab world praying for their friends in Set 7 in Lebanon and you know we've all always wanted to support these kids but we were really touched this time to see kids supporting us and you know just calling and they want to check on us and pray for us so we feel that we built this beautiful these beautiful bridges between kids from all over the the arab world uh they feel that they have a support system uh people friends praying for them from all over the world uh, supporting them thinking of them and this alone makes you feel you know valued and loved and cared for and i think this is the need of each person, let alone kids. Definitely. And you said how 
it's like therapy for the children. And yeah. so I suppose for you being a singer songwriter, that's like therapy for you as well, especially yeah, exactly. having gone through the, the war in Lebanon in 2006. So do you think that this current sort of war that we find us in, the war with coronavirus, is really going to help children and their faith through Sat7 mm -hmm. in this time? Yeah, well, uh, during summer 2006, um, I was so young and my daddy used to go to the army and I heard him once say that she is going to have to go and fight. I cannot remember that night. I went to my room, I cried out to God and I said, please God, protect him. Let him stay here with me. And I will never forget, I, I wrote a song that, that that night. It says, how could I be scared? How could I feel weak when you're always, Lord, awake here beside me? And I remember the next day I came back home and I learned that daddy was not going to go to war. And I praised God. And was so happy and you know from that day on he started doing such miracles small miracles that really mean to a child and I wanted to transmit this to kids you know to teach them that he's here he listens to you uh, even if the circumstances around us are terrible are scary it is okay to feel scared but please take all these to God put them at his feet and just you know proclaim his promises the Bible is full of promises of security and that he's always here beside us. You know, there's a verse that I really love. It says, I can hide and rest secure under the shadows of the Almighty. He will protect me from deadly diseases, from, from wars raged against me. So I just want them to know that take your, uh, your, you know, your feelings and put them uh, in his hands, trust in him. So you're taking your amazing experiences as a child, but also now your experiences as being a mother into your program, Allo Marianne. So how are you using those experiences to influence what you're doing now? Um, you know, becoming a mom really um, I changed my whole view about children it you know it, it touched my heart now i can see my boy noah and every child around me and i can't but pray for them and you know feel i want to save them i want them to experience god truly and grow in their faith in their faith um you know, I know now how to relate more with kids, uh, to know what scares them, what entertains them, uh, what makes them really frustrated. And I can think of new ways now to relate to them and to, you know, teach them biblical truths and simple and interactive ways because I do that with my son and I learn while doing that with him. So I think that helps me a lot with how I uh, interact with my viewers. It's really good, isn't it? Because when we're trying to imitate Jesus, children learn through imitation. So therefore, yeah. if they're imitating us, they're imitating Jesus. Wow, that's very true. Yes. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you about an amazing story from a lady called Sarah, who watched your program Let's Sing Together when she was growing up. Now, I've heard about this story, but could you tell us about it? Definitely. So Sarah was four when she first tuned into Sat7 uh, from her home in Syria. And, you know, soon she, be you know, like Sat7 became her top channel and she used to love all the song and one of my programs, old programs, uh, Let's Sing Together. Uh, she worshipped with us. She memorized the, the all the songs, and then she uh, re she she said when she was fourteen, all the songs, all the things she had learned, make her made her faith grow, and she was able to you know um, with all the peer pressure in her ch in her school, she decided I want to follow Jesus and take love from Him and not from anywhere else in the world. And when you know the um, when uh, the war broke in Syria, that's where she. She kept strong by holding on to every truth she learned from the Sat7 shows. And that was amazing for me. And uh, now uh, she works in a displaced and orphaned uh, center in Syria. She serves with kids there and she, uh, like, uh, she takes all her resources and materials from Sat7 kids shows, and which is amazing, truly. She said, they stayed in my mind and I've kept them with me as I've grown up. This is so touching and so wonderful to hear. It is so wonderful to hear and I really hope and pray that others are inspired by hearing this story because this is real life. This is real things that have happened yeah. to real people and it's, it truly is inspirational. What you're doing is wonderful. So how can we be proactive in supporting you prayerfully? How can we be praying for you, for your team, for your show? 
Um, there's a lot to pray for, and um, I think what I think uh, first is I want us to pray for peace which passes all understanding to be in the hearts of the children who are affected by the explosion. Um, I want to also please to pray for parents as they deal with many material needs and the impact of their own mental health some, sometimes while also supporting their children. And this is a big struggle now for parents in the Middle East. Um, I would like us also to pray for a provision of housing, of food, medical care, uh, and for people to be able to return to the sense of normality again after all the bad things that have happened. And finally, it would be great to pray for seven kids programs. Uh, I pray with all my heart that they may keep on bringing joy, showing love, strengthening, you know, their faith, the faith of children in such times, not only in Lebanon, but in all the Middle East. Well, let's say amen to that right now. And we will keep praying for all of those things as well. Marianne, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Before you go, would you mind singing another song for us? And maybe this time one that you've written? Definitely. Thank you so much, Emma, for this wonderful time. Shukran uh, in Arabic. And yes, I'm going to play now a song that I've written a few years ago. Um, uh, as you know, like the Middle East, we were going in the Middle East through an instability phase. And I wanted kids to remember that God, Allah, He is love. He is always with us. He will never leave us. The song is in Arabic and I also translated it into English. That was absolutely beautiful, stunning, just like you. Thank you so much. Thanks, We've boys. really enjoyed spending time with you today. I hope that you have been challenged and inspired by what you've heard and seen today. I know that I have. Now, as a mum and someone who works with children in media, I think it's really crucial to help kids reach their potential and find real joy. All over the world, families are finding life really difficult, but in places like the Middle East, the challenges are long-standing. Even before the pandemic, conflicts, uprisings and poverty prevented children from learning and flourishing, from being free, free to be me. But in the midst of it all, as you've heard today, Sat7 broadcasts faith-filled programmes that bring joy into millions of homes. Homes like Sarah's, who we heard about just a few minutes ago. So will you help? Will you become a joy bringer today? Just £10 a month enables Sat7 to broadcast joy to over 240 children for a whole year. To find out more, please call 0300 365 0377 or visit sat7uk.org. Now, it just leaves me to say shukran for watching and for your support. And goodbye, Masalama. Salama.